Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. All the glory and all the honor belongs to our God. He is indeed worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands right there. Yeah. 
to you All the glory belongs to you, oh God All the glory belongs to you All the glory belongs to you, oh God Can we stop the music right here? Come on, everybody lift your voice Sing all the glory belongs All the glory belongs to you Come on, lift up your voice Hallelujah, God, you brought me through another week. Come on, lift your voice. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you. I got to give him worship. All the glory belongs to you, oh He's God. been so good to me, I just can't tell it all. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you. I got to give it to you. All the glory hey, hey, hey. Last time, come on, sing all the glory belongs. Come on, sing all the glory belong. Thank you, Jesus. You are our Lord and Savior. You're Alpha and Omega. Sing all the glory belongs. Yeah. Belongs to you, oh God. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your word. Jesus, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty. Hallelujah. It's our desire on this morning to be where the Lord resides. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm, that's where we long to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. No other place I'd rather be. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I want to dwell in your presence. That's Help me sing it. Say, Lord, I want to dwell in your presence. Real simple song. That's where I long. That's where I long to be. Come on, sing it with us as we catch it. Say, Lord, I want to bask in your spirit. Come on, say, that's where I long to be. I give you permission. I give you permission. Come on, say to live in my heart. Live in my heart. Lord, I surrender. Lord, I surrender. surrender every part. Surrender every part. To be in your pride. Oh Lord, it's all that I have. Oh, I see that's where. One more time, I give you permission. I give you permission. Come on, say to live in my heart, to live in my heart. Lord, I surrender. Surrender every part. It's our desire to be in your presence. Oh, it's all. In the next part, say, Lord, I want to know you with your power. Oh, that's where I long to be. And when this life is over, Lord, I want, yeah, to live with you forever. Sing it together. Say, I give you permission. I give you permission to live in my heart. Come on, I know you gotta say, Lord, I surrender. Lord, I
Oh, it's the only way we will make it. It's if we abide in your presence, oh God, that's where. Yeah. Oh, that's where we long to be. Come on, see, that's where we long. That's where I long to be. Time lift it up and say, That's where I belong. That's where I belong to be. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Somebody say, Hallelujah. Somebody say, That's where I want to be. Right there in your presence, oh God. Come on, right where you are, take a moment and make this personal. Make contact with God. Go ahead, now open up your mouth and begin to praise Him. Tell Him, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I honor you. There is no one like you, God. I adore you. I admire you. On Father's Day, you are a good, good father. You're the greatest father that a person could ever have. Come on, come on, praise Him right where you are. Tell them there's no father as kind as you are, as compassionate as you are, as faithful as you are, as just as you are. Come on, open up your mouth and tell them, God, you're an amazing God. You're amazing. Shout at God, you're amazing. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this day. We honor you. We envelop your presence. We not only invite you here, God, but we need you here. We not only want to hear a word, God, but we need a word. God, our hearts are thirsty. Many of us are parched, Lord God. We've been through this and been through that and had hatred and had all kinds of things aimed at us, but God, you are a consoler. You are a confidant. You are a company keeper. And God, we got some odds stacked against us, but God, you are a way maker. You are a promise keeper, Lord God. And God, some of us have a lot of weight on us, and God, you are a heavy load sharer. Oh God, we thank you right now, Lord God. We bless your name in this place. And so Father, come in right now, God. You do the preaching, Holy Spirit. Minister to every person under the sound of my voice in the way they need, it. They need to be ministered to. Only you know that, Lord God. And Father, we'll be careful to give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Right there with lifted hands, we say thank you in advance. We don't even wait until the battle is over. We don't wait until we get to work tomorrow. We don't wait until the bill is paid. We don't wait until anything happens. We don't wait until the good report. We praise you in advance, God. We got that much faith that we don't even have to wait until it shows up. We declare in the name of Jesus that the medical report is good. We declare that the promotion is ours. We declare that the rent is paid. We declare that our kids are saved. We declare it, God. In the matchless name of Jesus, we shout amen, amen. Now, now come on, clap your hands. Clap your hands like you win. Clap your hands like you're the victor. Clap your hands like you're blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Amen. God bless your music ministry. You may be seated. You may be seated. Thank God for our music ministry and all that they have meant to us. We appreciate you so very much. Well, family, today is Father's Day. Let's take a moment to honor every father. If you are a father in the building, would you stand so that we may honor you? Come on, clap your hands for every father. Yes, yes, yes. And we also salute every father that is not present. My brothers and my sisters are here. Our father is not present today, but we thank God that he's alive and healthy and well, 92 years old and still kicking it. And we thank God for all that he's done and we salute him in his absence and we salute every father who could not be here today, but we definitely salute the ones that are here. And listen, especially as I stand here, I see a bunch of African-American fathers and there's a stigma. And I thank you for breaking the stigma for every father that stays. Come on. 
for every father that invests in your kids, for every father. You may not be in the house, but you make the phone calls. You, you pay tuition. You do all kinds of things. We, we salute you today. And for every father who says, Pastor, I'm not who I should be, we still salute you. We don't wait until the battle is over. We clap our hands and honor you right now. And watch this, even to the father who wants to be in their kids' lives. But you waited so long that you think it's too late. Start today. Start today. Start today. Start today. Do me a favor. Stretch your hand towards every man and just speak a blessing over every father. If you're seated, just speak a blessing. I'm not going to pray. You speak a blessing over him. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Keep him, God. Keep his mind, Lord God. Come on. Speak a blessing over him. As I pulled up this morning, all of my spiritual sons in the ministry, I just told them I'm so proud of you and I'm so proud of every father in the building. Come on, there's a word, there's a word in the house. And the word is going to minister to the fathers, but it's going to minister to everybody. Just like on Mother's Day, it's not father specific, but it will minister to every father, mother, person present in the building. Just for a moment, if you would stand with me for the reading of the word. We love to stand here because we reverence the word. Jeremiah chapter number 18. Very precious text to me because I preached this for my very first sermon. I've been preaching for 20 years and I don't think I've only really preached it but a couple of times. If you're there, say amen. Verse number one says this, and I don't want to keep you long today. It's Father's Day. I want you to go and eat and enjoy your day. But I think this is the first food you need. The Bible says, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, arise, go down to the potter's house, and there I will announce my words to you. Jeremiah says, so I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something on the wheel, the potter's wheel. But verse number four says, but the vessel that he was making of clay was spoiled, broken, marred in the hand of the potter. So he remade it into another vessel as it pleased the potter to make. Verse number five, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, am I not able house of Israel to deal with you as this potter does? Heavy question for every person in the building today. Is God not able to deal with you the way the potter dealt with the clay? Just for a moment, I want to speak from the subject. Lord, reinvent me. Lord, reinvent me. Take your seats, but as you take your seats, throw up your hands and make that statement if you're serious about it and say, Lord, reinvent me. In other words, Lord, make me over. Lord, make me the vessel that seems good for you to make. When people respect you as a person, they admire you. When they respect you as a friend, they love you. When they respect you as a leader, they follow you. Let me say that again. When they respect you as a person, they admire you. When they respect you as a friend, they love you. But when they respect you as a leader, they follow you. Many of us listening to this message this morning aspire to be loved, to be admired, and to be followed. Many of us listening to this message this morning are desperately seeking and striving for a better life, to have something we have never had, to do something that we've never done. However, what many of us don't understand is this, in order to possess something that you've never had and to do something that you've never done, you have to become somebody you've never been. 
I don't know if you know how deep and profound what I just said was, but I'll repeat it. In order to do what you've never done and to possess what you've never possessed, you must become someone you've never been. In other words, you cannot keep striving for something different and yet remain the same. And there are many of us in the room who are vehemently, we're, we're desperately striving for something greater but refusing to change. Many of us have yet to throw up our hands and say, Lord, make me over. Many of us have yet to throw up our hands and say, God, I know I can't accomplish what you called me to accomplish in the form I'm in. God, make me over. Watch this. For somebody who's listening to me right now, if you become the person you envision, you will attract what you've envisioned. If you become the person you envision, because all of us sitting here, we have a vision of ourselves that we would like to become. If you become that, you'll get the things you've envisioned. In our text, our text is really pregnant with preaching possibilities. Pregnant with pedagogical potency. In other words, it's full of teachable moments. In the Bible, God is having trouble with Israel. The problem he's having with Israel is that they keep being hot and cold. Committed and uncommitted. One moment they're hot, one moment they're cold. One moment they're committed, one moment they're incommitted. They're they're flaky. I know that's not you this morning, but do you know anybody like that? Some days they wake up on fire. Other days they wake up depressed. Some days they wake up friendly. Some days you don't want to deal with. Some days... How do I get myself to a place where I can have stability in my life? How can I get myself to a place where I can have joy every day regardless of what's going on in my life? Can I teach you today? So God sends a message to Israel through the crying prophet Jeremiah. But the way he sends the message is very unique. Because he doesn't just tell him the message and say, tell them this. No, he sends him on assignment. He says, Jeremiah, here's what I want you to do. This is what I love about God. He says, I want you to go down to the potter's house and posture yourself in the corner and observe what he does. You would be amazed what you can learn just by watching. They got people sitting here right now, and I'm going to talk about a mentor in a moment, talking about I have no mentor, but if you would watch somebody you respect, you could learn from just watching. The Bible says, he says, go down to the potter's house, and he says, and I went, and I sat, and I watched. And the Bible says that the potter, can I take my time, is it okay? Okay. The potter took a lump of clay with no particular shape and he moistened it and he put it on the wheel. The wheel is this device that's flat on the top like a table. At the bottom it has a pedal where you turn it so that you can mold clay. And the Bible says, watch this, he begins to make with his hands what he had in his mind. Somebody's going to get this in a minute. He transmuted what was in his mind to what was in his hands. He transferred the thoughts or the imagery that was in his mind and started making it with his hands. The Bible says he wet the clay so that it would be pliable, put it on the table and began to spin it and began to shape it, and it was coming out wonderfully. But verse 4 says that there was a complication That everything was going fine until the vessel that he was making spoiled, broke, or marred in his hands 
in the process of the making. Now, the word spoiled, New American Standard Bible translation says spoiled. The word spoiled means to expire. It means to be old, so old that it starts to decay and break down. And what you do with spoiled things is when you go in your refrigerator and something is breaking down or it's got mold on it, it's past the date, you take it and you throw it away. But not the master potter. Can I talk to everybody who has a promise that has seemingly expired? Can I talk to everybody who thinks that they're too old to bring to pass what God promised you? Can I talk to somebody who feels like Abraham and Sarah this morning that it's too late that you're in your old age and it's probably not possible to start the business, to write the book, to become the dad, to become the mom, to do what God has called you to do? The thing that I love about God is when something seemingly expires, God doesn't throw it away. God gives it another chance. I came to declare over every person with old dreams and old promises that I believe that God is going to give you another chance. That if you would open up your eyes and open up your mind to the possibilities of what could happen in your life, that God is able to do something that will blow your mind. Throw up your hands and say, I'm 60, but I'm still fine. Come on, somebody. I'm 65, but I still got time. I'm 70, and I'm still going to do this thing. I'm in my 50s, but it's not too late. 40 is the new 20, y'all. Now, shout with me. I wish I had somebody in the building that says, my 40 is the new 20. I feel better at 40 than I did at 20. Then the Bible says that it was broken. One translation says broken. And broken, broken, watch this, things break for several reasons. Sometimes they, they break because the pressure is too great. Sometimes pressure will break you. Somebody sitting in here had a loved one die and the pressure broke you. Somebody in here lost a job and the pressure broke you, lost the house and the pressure broke you, lost the car, lost the car and the house, lost the kid, lost. And it broke you. And sometimes, watch this, pressure only exposes problems with the structure. It exposes structural fragility that is not evident. Weak spots. <laughs> I was, I was, I said I'm going to take my time today. Watch this. I, 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 I bought my first, what I thought was a nice car. I bought my first nice car. And early on when I got it, I hit a pothole and I put a hole in the tire. And I went to the shop where I bought it from expecting the same thing to happen that happened with my old car. Because when I bust a tire on my old car, they put a plug in it and sent me going. But when I got the new car, I went to the place and they said, you're going to need a new tire. I said, it's just got a hole in it. Can you plug it? They said, no, the structural integrity has been broken. Therefore, we cannot trust it to do what it's supposed to do any longer. So we got to throw it away and get a new one. But I came to tell you today that you got a God that's so bad that he could restore the structural integrity after the integrity has been broken down, that God has the ability to restore it and make it look like it didn't even happen. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I got some witnesses in the building that God restored me so good that I had some soft spots, I had some flaws, I had some fragilities, but God made me back better and stronger and wiser. Oh God, don't get me started. Watch that. But God, watch this, everybody. God has the ability to make old things look new. Now, watch this. The first thing that the text teaches us is this. A perfect time for reinvention is after you have suffered something that broke you. 
The text tells us that. The text says the perfect time for reinvention is right after something has broken you because the Bible says that it was broken in his hands and right after it was broken, he began to make it again another vessel, which lets me know that the perfect time for reinvention is after you've been broken. And there's somebody in the room today who's broken who thinks that your life is over, but what you don't understand is you're in perfect position to be made over again. And while you're crying, you might ought to be shouting because God is about to do something great in your life that you've never even envisioned or imagined. Can I talk to every broke person in the room? I dare you to just throw up your hands and stop acting like you're not broken when you're really broken. I, I came to talk to every frustrated person in the room who want to act like you're not frustrated, but you're really frustrated. Would you just forget everybody in the building and throw up your hands and say, God, it's the perfect time to reinvent me. I've been marred. I've been broken. I've been spoiled. I've been all of those things, but God, make me... Oh, God, I got to move, but watch it. Make me over, God. Reinvention can only happen through transformation. Watch this. And the word transform means to make a thorough or dramatic change in form, appearance, or character thereof. In other words, if I'm going to undergo a transformation, I have to change in form and watch this, for those of us who are sitting in the room, it doesn't mean that we're going to change physically necessarily. And some of us will because we're going to work out and lose some weight and, and get the way we want to get. But, but watch this, through a character change, God's going to change everything. And inward change is going to change my outward reality. And today God is going to begin to make me over. Watch it, watch it. Another word for transform is convert. That's why when, when we get saved, we say we've been converted. Converted means that I'm no longer the person that I was, that I'm a new creature and old things have passed away. I have been converted, transformed, metamorphosis, new person, new being. But here's what I've learned. When God transforms you once, that's not the only transformation. God keeps transforming you and keeps transforming you until you come into the image of his son Christ. And God is going to transform you until you die. That's why if you got breath in your body, you can't sit there and say, God can't do nothing with me. God is still transforming you. At 92, transform my daddy. Come on, God. As long as I got breath in my body, make me over and over and over and over until I come into the image of... Change me to the point that I can never bounce back. When he said he made it again, another vessel, he made it so good that it could never bounce back to what it was. Make me so good that I can never bounce back to what I used to be. Make me over so good that I can never bounce back to doing what I used to do. Make me so good that I can't think like I used to think. Make me over so good that I can't go where I used to go. God, give me an inward change that births a new outward reality. But watch this. Here's what I've learned. <clears throat> that inward changes often come through outward pressures. I want you to think about this for a moment. Oftentimes, we are broken. I want you to think about everybody in the Bible that God used. Moses was a broken vessel. Grew up in the house of Pharaoh, ended up on the run, backside of the mountain, thinking life was over, reinvention. Gideon, everyone that you love, says it's over. I'm the least in my family, and my family is the least in Manasseh. Can't do nothing with me, Lord. Made him over. Elijah, 
ran and hid a day's journey in the wilderness and said, God, I want to die. God says, nope, I'm going to make you over. Y'all not talking back to me. Abraham says, daddy, I'm too old. You can't use me. God says, yep, I'm going to use you. I'm going to make you over. Sarah, you tripping? Girl, I'm going to make you viable again. I'm going to make your breasts and gorge with milk. In other words, I'm going to make you productive in your old age. I don't know who I came to talk to today. Everybody that God used, Noah was a trip. He got drunk. Everybody had a hand up so why can't God use you and change your hang up watch this and so we we experience this brokenness and then God calls us and he calls us oftentimes in our brokenness while Moses is on the backside of the mountain Come here, Moses. Go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Wait, God, you, you don't understand. I'm, I'm, on the, I'm, I'm on the mail wall. They want me in Egypt. Gideon. Go. And what happens is, because of our brokenness, we often refuse to call. And watch this. God is calling somebody in here this morning. He may not be calling you to move a million people across a Red Sea, but he could be calling you to be a greater father. He could be calling you to be a greater mother. He could be calling you, watch this, to expand, to grow, to become something better than you are presently right now, to be more disciplined, to be... I can guarantee you God is calling everybody in the room to something greater right now. And many people are refusing the call because the brokenness makes you feel unqualified to answer the call. And sometimes the greatest leaders are the ones who initially feel they're unworthy. I got to go watch this. Then what happens typically is God intervenes and sends a mentor. Watch this. Sends a mentor. Elisha is plowing. Elijah shows up. Timothy needs tutoring, and Paul shows up. The disciples don't have a clue, but Jesus shows up. And God, when he gets ready for you, will send somebody who can pull you. Oh, now watch this. Here's the thing that I want to caution you, but oftentimes and every time that person initially is not a person. Sometimes it's a book. Sometimes it's the Bible. Sometimes it's something you see on YouTube. Sometimes you never know what God might use to move you. And then when you need somebody, he'll send somebody. Joshua. Yes, God. My servant Moses is dead. He's been your mentor. Now it's your time to take the children of Israel over the Red Sea. The next thing I just want to say quickly is you can't be a mentee your whole life. At some point, the mentee has to become a mentor. Watch it. Y'all good? God will send help. But here's what I want to show you, and I want to park for a minute, if you're not tired of me. And then often after that stage, the trials you experience serve as agents of transformation. I'm going to say something heavy, and I never want you to forget this. Everything you want, love, and desire lives behind a problem or a process you refuse to face or embrace. 
I'm going to be gone soon. Everything you want, love, and desire lives behind a problem or a process you refuse to face or embrace. And for many of us, we've been spending our entire life trying to figure out how to get around what God called you to face. Your whole life has consisted of trying to figure out how to get around what God called you to go through. Walking laterally, trying to find a way around the Red Sea. Walking laterally, trying to get across the Jordan. There's got to be a break somewhere. There's got to be, no! You got to go through it. When are you going to gather the gumption to go? What are you waiting for? Oh, God, I don't know who I'm talking to. Watch it. Goliath was David's pathway, not his adversary. Goliath was David's pathway, not his adversary. Because David realized that you are no adversary for me because I'm a child of the Most High God. You are uncircumcised Philistine and the fight is fixed. And so you are not an adversary. You are a pathway. And how do I begin to see a pathway where other people see an adversary? Because watch this. What Goliath did for David is he put his life into another stratosphere that it never would have entered without Goliath. And had anybody else fought Goliath and won, they too would have been in the stratosphere. But they were afraid to do what David realized had to be done. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody. Freedom for David was on the other side of Goliath. Freedom for the Hebrew children was on the other side of the Red Sea. Freedom for the children of Israel was on the other side of Jordan and on the other side of Jericho, which had a seemingly impenetrable wall. And it was a series of going through. Joy was on the other side of the furnace for the Hebrew boys. Joy was on the other side of the cross for Jesus. And what did they all have in common? They had to endure something that changed them. Then the changed person obtained something that they never had before. Watch this. Reinvention, I'm almost done, has everything to do with how you respond to obstacles. Ryan Holiday says this, and I quote, obstacles are an opportunity to express, practice, virtue, patience, courage, humility, resourcefulness, reason, justice, and creativity. What we have to see is, watch this, that obstacles, challenges, adversities are gifts. And until you start to embrace them as such, you will suffer under the thumb of adversity. You cannot have a great body without enduring some suffering. You got to have the discipline to eat right and every day that doesn't feel good, you have to have the discipline to wake up and beat your body up And then somebody walks in looking good, and you're like, ooh, they look great. But you don't know what it cost. And for everything that you call great, there was a cost that somebody endured. And if everybody was willing, they would have what that person has. Watch it. Here's here's an acronym I never want you to forget. Oreo. Everybody loves cookies. Most people. Oreo. What does it stand for, Pastor? Pastor. Obstacle plus response equals outcome. 
How you respond to the obstacles in your life will determine the outcome of your life. Isn't it funny the people who make the most money are the people who solve the greatest problems that serve the greatest need for the people of the world? And it's the people who solve the problems that get paid the money and we keep running from the problems but want the money? Y'all not talking back to me. If I could talk about problems, they show us many things. They, they cause our faith to surface. They stretch our faith. Dr. King, watch this would not be who he was had he not been forced into the situation he was forced into. Watch this, family. In order for a vessel to be reshaped, remolded, several things have to happen. Number one, when that vessel was marred in the hands of the potter, everybody listening? In order to make it pliable again, it had to add moisture. The potter had to ch, 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 ch. Watch this. The moisture represents the rain that falls in your life. And if you would see the rain that falls in your life as moisture that moistens you so that you can be reshaped and remolded, watch this, because many of us sitting here will not change if there's no rain. I'm, I'm serious. You don't learn a whole lot in your successes. It's in your failures that you learn a lot. It's in your failures that you position yourself and posture yourself to say, what is going on? I need to change something in my life. But if you keep winning all the time, you'll never change. And so every now and then, you need to experience a loss so that the loss can prompt you to change more. Because if you never, ever have rain, you never lose, then you never feel like there's a need to change. The moist. Somebody said, Pastor, you don't understand. I got torrential downflows. I understand. But what if you used the rain in your life and counted it a gift and said, Lord, I thank you for the rain. Now that I'm at rock bottom, I'm going to use Jesus, who's the rock at the bottom, to take me to the top. Now I'm in position to be transformed. Now I'm in position to be changed. I have nothing to lose but everything to gain. I'm not tripping anymore. I've got nothing to lose. I'm going forward. You don't understand, they fired me. I know, maybe it's time to be reinvented and start a new career. You don't understand, he left me. I understand, maybe it's time for you to reinvent yourself and use this rain to make yourself pliable and moist so that God can make you the woman that you called to be so you can attract the man you need. Maybe it's a... Y'all not talking back. Maybe, 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 maybe. I'm 50, Pastor. How do I start a new career? Baby, it's easy. Start today. Go to YouTube University. And look, stop looking at stuff that just entertains you. Learn something on there. You can learn a new trade. You can. While it's raining, why not find what brings you alive? Why they fired you? When they fired you, why not say, you know what? I'm not getting another job. What brings me alive? What makes me want to wake up in the morning? What would get me out of the bed in the morning? What would give me joy? What would I do if I didn't get paid for it? I got to find where I'm supposed to be. And some of you don't understand what you're in right now is an opportunity for you to switch up, for you to change, for you to become, for you to be... For you to be more compassionate, for you to be kinder. Some of you, you're going through something. Now you see what other people have gone through. You're going to be kinder and more compassionate to other people's plights. Then watch this. After this morning, he has to put it back on the wheel and spin it. Pastor, how can I thank God for the spinning? Because without the spinning, there's no shaping. Well, Pastor, what's the purpose of the spinning? It seems like every time I've endeavored to do something new, there was spinning. 
When I accepted my call to ministry, my life spent like crazy. When I accepted the call to pastor, my life spent like crazy. Every time I endeavor something new, there's a spinning. And God, what is the spinning for? And I, I, I understood something. What spinning does is it not only prepares you to be molded, but it throws off that which is not really attached. And every spinning that I've had has thrown people off that weren't really attached to me. And I cried because they left. But when I was over, I rejoiced that they were gone. Y- y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Some of you got some stuff and some people that you think are attached. They are not attached. They're just there for what they can get. And a little spinning will show you who's really attached. And it will throw off people and things that don't really belong to you that are not a part of what God is calling you to do. Oh, if I had time, I promised I wouldn't be long. Watch it. And then there has to be pressure. I got to push it in places and expand it in places. What is God doing? Somebody, He's making me. He's making me small in areas I need to be small with larger, in areas I need to be large. He's, he's mold. And the pressure is not to break, but to make. Pressure has defined me more than pleasure. It's those who perform well under pressure, who are comfortable under intense scrutiny, that become the ones we call great. I'm out of your hair. I'm watching the basketball last night, Kevin Durant coming down. Every time he's down, they lost, but every time he wanted the ball. There are other people who shy away from pressure moments. They shy away because I can't handle the responsibility of the pressure. But when you begin to handle the responsibilities in pressure situations, it shows maturation and development. And people like that are always sought after. Everybody else is running to, oh, God, what do we do? Standing there saying, what is wrong with y'all? The same God that delivered me back in 95, the same God that delivered me in 2000, the same God that helped me when I accepted my call back in, in, in 2001, the same God. I'm out your hair. And then finally, watch this. There has to be bacon. Because then the bacon gets the moisture out and locks in the change. And somebody right now, you might be in the oven. But the good news about being in the oven is that when you come out, you'll never go back. I'm out of here. Watch this. Well, what's the good news of the whole text, Pastor? The greatest news of the whole text is that it all occurs in his hands. Everything that I've been through, the whole time I never left his hands. Come here, somebody. I don't know where you are. I don't know what part of the process you're in, but you can rejoice in the fact that you're in the hands of God and God is making you again another vessel that seems good for the powder. And when it's all said and done, you are going to be better than you've ever been before you can stand to your feet watch this so pastor how do I start embracing this change watch this if I could use an illustration I started to bring my weights in here but if you if you get a a dumbbell or a barbell at first you can just if you can just pick it up it's good just put it back down and pick it up And then you can flip it up. And then one day you'll be able to push it up. And it's called progression. Watch this. Start small, take small steps. Make adjustments as you go. 
for somebody in the room right now, this is not your season to be with a lot of people. It has nothing to do with you being, thinking that you're somebody special or, oh, I don't want to be with, no, this has everything to do with, okay, God, in this season, I need some questions answered for me. And nobody in my circle has the answers but you. And the truth is, my identity is tied up in you. And the more I get to know you, the better I get to know me. And so in this season of transformation, I'm going to steal myself, God. In this season of transformation, I'm going to sit down in a quiet place, meditate and pray, spend time in the Word, write in my journal thoughts that I've been having, things that have been crossing my mind, write some goals, put down my phone, put away the distractions so that I can finally embrace this new reinvention. Because God, I know what you want. You want me to expand. You want me to grow. Why? So that I can impact the world for you in some way. Sometimes we make it so deep. I don't care if you do hair. You can do hair. You can do hair and impact the world for the Lord. And encourage folks. You can be a trainer and encourage folks. You can be... You could work at the gas station and encourage folks. And before you know it, God will promote you. The more you impact people, the more God will promote you. And so, I got to go. But you got to lift your hands and embrace the process. Say, God, go ahead, make me over. Make me a better husband. Make me a better father. Make me a better child, daughter, son, wife. Birth new things through me that you have. Watch this. There's somebody in the room. There's some stuff in you. And there's an uneasiness about you right now because you have not birthed it. People, I'm trying to hurry, but... People often ask me this. They, they say, how does it feel to be pastor? How does it feel this? How does it feel that? And this is my response. I feel behind. They're like, what do you mean? I feel like there's so much more I need to birth. And watch this. How many people in here feel that way? That there's got to be more. Raise your hand high. Raise your hand high. There's got to be more that God wants to do through me. Watch this. This is the season to embrace it. <laughs> this is the season to believe. One of the things that I was going to put in my sermon, I didn't put it in there, is belief. You will get what you believe. Not what you hope. Not what you think or desire. What you believe. Believe that you have received it and it shall be yours. When you pray, believe that you have received it and it will be. You will receive what you have believed. And so up until this point, if you look at your reality, you will know what you have believed. Because watch this, watch this. I didn't put it in my message, but I got to say it. In the word belief, watch this, is the word lie. Which means it is possible for you to believe a lie. And until you change your belief and take out the lie, then and only then will you receive what God promised. What's the lie? I'm going to always be in debt. What's the lie? I'm going to always have lack. What's the lie? I can't write a book. What's the lie? I can't. Because the Bible says that all things are possible through Christ Jesus, then watch this. Anything that the enemy keeps telling you you can't do is a... And so I got to take the lie out of my belief so I stop believing a lie. 
and infect it with the truth so that the truth will be manifested and revealed in my life. Watch this. Wealth is a state of being. It's a state of mind. It's a state of belief. Wealth is not just money. Health. You believe you're going to be healthy? Stop saying it runs in my family. I don't care. It ran in my family. It stopped at me. Divorce, debt, lack, all, all of it stops with me. I got to go, but watch this. For everybody that I'm ministering to, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we posture and position ourselves to be reinvented, to embrace this greater calling that you're calling us to so that we can impact the lives that you called us to impact. God, our birth was not a coincidence. It's not because our mom and daddy got together. It's because you had a will for us to be here. And you had something for us to do, an impact for us to make. And God, right now somebody is stressing because they're getting a little older, but they haven't made the impact. My first prayer is, God, make it plain what you called them to do. Make it plain. And God, as they embrace it, reveal the resources, the people, the things that they need. But God, I know this, unless they take a step of faith, they will never see what you already have prepared. And so God, give us all the faith to step when we can't even clearly see the next step. And so Father, we honor you today. And Lord, most of all, may our lives bring you glory. Whatever we do, God. The Bible says, do it as unto the Lord. Whatever we do, we do it as unto you, that you might be glorified and lifted up. Even if it doesn't seem like much, God, if we touch one life or two lives. But ultimately, God, we want to touch as many lives as you've called us to touch. Father, if there's one here that doesn't know that they're saved, if there's one here that needs to rededicate their life, if there's one here, God, that wants to be a member of this body, God, give them the courage and boldness to come. It's in Jesus' name we pray. The saints of God said, amen. Amen. Clap your hands. Watch this. If that's you, you can come right now. Come right now. Come right now. Come right now. If that's you, you can come right now. If that's you, you can come right now. And I'm going to say something, and we're going to sing, and I'm going I'm to let you come. Watch this. <clears throat> I'm going to say something, and, and you're going to think you're gonna think one thing, but I'm going to clarify it for you. I, I want to be a billionaire. Now watch this. Many of, you, many of you say, oh, he wants a billion dollars. Having a billion dollars is not the only way to be a billionaire. I want to touch a billion lives. Watch this. Stop thinking in just money because I'm going to teach a series on money and I'm going to show you that money is just a measuring stick of your level of service. And if you would touch more people and stop worrying about money, the money would come. And watch this. Instead of saying, I want to be a, a millionaire and just talk about dollars, watch this. Think about how can I touch a million lives? How can I be a hundred thousand there in terms of lives? How, how can I touch 10,000 lives so that people know Jesus, so that people live better, so that people can be greater fathers, so that people can be greater mothers, so that people, better women can, can be raised up, so that men who are abused can, can so that addicts, whatever I'm called to, you, you feel me? You feel me? Start saying that. I'm going to be a millionaire. Everybody say you're going to have a million dollars. I'm going to touch a million lives. And how many dollars God produces, I don't know. He'll, he'll, he'll take care of the I'm going to touch a million lives before I die. I can't let that go. How many lives have you touched? And are you satisfied with the touch? Come on, sing a little bit, y'all. Everybody lift their hands to the Lord. Sing this simple song with us. Right here, Lord, make me over. Like you mean it, make me over.
Make me over. Come on, one last time. Lord. they're still playing that we're going to raise our offering we're going to give and you go celebrate your father's day enjoy your kids and your wife and all those who are near and dear to you grab your best seat how many of you know that having service at these different locations it, it costs us every time it costs us every time but watch this if you if you enjoy it then so into it so into it so into it the first time I sold a large seed I was at a conference and the conference was so good that I didn't want it to stop and so when they asked for the seed I sold it because it was so good to me it changed my life I didn't want it to stop and watch this if if God is good to you and he's speaking to you through these services you ought to say man I'm gonna sow I don't I don't want them to stop I don't want them to stop online was cool but I like in person I we got to rent a facility and do some stuff. I, I want to be a part of it, so I'm going to give a little bit more. I'm going to give towards it so that we can do that. Can you do that? How many of you know that if a 1,000 people give and everybody up there giving by 5 or $10, that that would be a huge difference? It's a little incremental increase, but with numbers, it makes a difference. Yeah. And so help us. Help us. We're going to be here for the next month the next month next month and I'm gonna tell you what we did because of, of all of our giving you see these speakers and all this stuff that's that we're using right here we don't, we don't rent none of this we bought all this this our stuff it's ours yeah got tired of giving people money so we bought our own stuff yeah and we're gonna keep buying our own stuff until we have to rent no stuff but that's why giving is so important Giving is so important. It allows us to be able to do those things. And then, you know, transporting these things. You know, what? We need to buy a truck. We need a truck. We need a truck. Yeah. We need a truck. We need a big box truck rolling around here with Rose Hill on the side of it, wrapped up pretty and nice. Yeah. Anybody see it with me? Anybody see it? Yeah. Yeah. So when we're hauling our stuff, people can see Rose Hill. They might just follow it to church. <laughs> Amen. Come on, let's text to give number is 84321. Just grab your cell phone in the little message box where it says two, like you're sending it to your friend. Just type 84321. You gonna put the first hundred on the truck? Yes, sir. Somebody go run run get that for me. Yes, sir. We receive it. Well, shoot, you ain't gonna outdo us. Sherman, let's put a hundred on the truck too. Yeah, let's do it. We put a hundred on the truck too. We got one on it too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got y'all got one on it too? That's what I'm talking about. Shucks. Let's go ahead and buy it. That go another hundred on it. Let's go and get it. Two hundred. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, there go another hundred on it. Come on, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Yeah. Let's get it. Amos got a hundred on it. I guess it. That's Marlon. Marlon got a hundred on it. Marlon. Y'all go buy a car from Marlon so he can put some more hundreds on it. Elijah and his wife just gave a hundred on it. That go another hundred on it. That go another hundred on it. Come on. Come on. That go another hundred. Cuz got a hundred on it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Come on now. Come on. Give God praise. There go my sister. She got another hundred. She got another. Go ahead on. Go ahead on. Come on, clap. To 
Terrell got another hundred on it. Yeah. Terrell got a tree service. Go use the tree service so he can put some more hundreds on it. Amen. My brother right there, he got it. Come on, brother. Come on. Come on, clap, church. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May the Lord bless you a hundred times over what you've given today towards the truck or towards our offering. Amen. Hey, we got some more money. Hey, come on here. Let's, come on, Joy. There you go. Cherie, all right. Come on now. Look at this. Look at God. Amen. Amen. We got to be at least a, a thousand or two in, huh? Amen. Amen. We're going to need about 28 more, but we're going to get them. Look at my man coming down the aisle right there. Come on, clap for him. Clap for him. I know you bringing that for mama or daddy. Clap for him, though. He the messenger. Amen. Amen. Y'all ready to go home? Amen. It's okay to say yes. It's okay to say yes. Come on, help me clap for Lady Shorman. Come on, clap for her. For Megan and D. Listen. One of the greatest honors that God ever gave me, one of the greatest gifts that God ever gave me, greatest things that he could have ever done for me was to let me be a father to Megan and DJ. That's one of the greatest gifts, greatest gifts he could have ever given me. Come on, come on, coach. Come on, coach. I see you, coach. Sandra, the Wilsons, all right. Come on, come on, brother. Come on, brother, sister Wilson. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all. Amen, amen. Next week, we're going to pick up thousands like this. Let's do it. Now, thank you so much for your generosity. We, we appreciate it, man. You just don't know how challenging it has been to, to do what we've been doing. But uh, we thank God for you. Do me a favor. Stand to your feet. I know you can't. Huh? We ain't pick up the offering yet? Well, I guess you I guess you can't say I just want money. Sit down and pass your pass your offering. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sister Grace. Sister Grace lost her mom too. Our hearts go out to you. We give you our condolences. We're so sorry. Yeah, so you got our love and our prayers. Yes. Um, come on, pass the offering, folks. Come on, give up something good to sing then. Some money giving music. <laughs> right there stay right there listen special thanks special thanks to principal quiet thank you so much thank you mr larry monson who helped us make this happen thank you to coach carlos samples thank you so much my brother you work hard thank you so much and then also to listen coach sample has a camp right here at scotlandville it's going to be june 28th through july the first if your kids play basketball it's going to be from 8 to 12 30 ages 8 to 17 it's a hundred dollars and listen he's going to give your kids some great instructions and help develop them and so it's worth the investment if your kids play basketball girls and boys come see him amen come see him that's june 28th through july 1st right here at scotlandville and listen, you know another reason I love being here at Scotlandville? I was raised in Scotlandville. This home for me, amen? Come on, stand to your feet. Everybody stand to your feet. Look at somebody and tell them it was good to see you. I know we can't hug like we want to. Tell them it was good to see you in the house of worship. It was good to see you in the house of worship. Tell them i see you next week. i see you next week. And next week you're going to look better than you look today. Go ahead, prophesy over. You're going to be more prosperous. Something good is going to happen for you this week. I speak a blessing over you. Tell them, tell them. I speak a blessing over you. I speak a blessing over your family, over your career. 
Amen. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for every father that's present. And Father, as we leave this place, but never your presence, give us traveling grace until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Go, no nigga. of the Lord.